And this was the very first storyteller. His name was Aki Weizi. Aki means earth, and Weizi means a long journey or a long time. When you put those together, you would say, well, he was a long time or a long journey on this earth, which is another way of saying he was an old man. He was a very old man. He was so old that people in the village didn't even know how old he was. He was so old that he didn't know how old he was. And every day he would get up from his wigwam and he would walk off into the bush. And once in the bush, he felt better. He took comfort there. He was surrounded by all this life and all this beauty, and that comforted him. Well, Larry, you are an American native storyteller and a master storyteller, too. How did that all come to be? Well, I was a, I was a member of a traveling drumming and dancing troupe, and we used to travel all over the Great Lakes Basin. And it just so happened that I happened to tell a story while we were having supper. Our whole, we had nine people uh, in the troupe, and I was just told a story. And, Several people said I did a good job, and wow, that was a good story, and that sort of thing. So, uh, just like anybody else, when you start getting compliments about what you're doing, you want to do more of yeah, it to get sure. more compliments. So, I, that's how I started, and then I found a, a great deal of truth and honesty in the stories, and a great enlightenment about those native peoples from so long ago who, who made these stories and who told these stories, and there's a a lot of wisdom and a lot of lessons to be learned from the story and that fascinated me. So I started being a storyteller, billing myself as a storyteller and when I did, other native people, a lot of the elders, grandmas and grandpas, they'd pull me aside and say, well I've got a story for you and they started giving me stories. It's about 40 years now that I've been studying and, and uh, analyzing and trying to recover stories and share those stories. Well on this one particular day, he got up in the morning, opened his flap, started walking to, out into the bush. He had to go through the village. And as he walked through the village, there was a group of boys, and they were playing hacky sack. Now, I told you what Kowesi was an old man. He was a very old man. And like an old man, he took small steps, and he walked kind of slow. And he, as he passed that group of boys playing hacky sack, one of those boys left the circle of hacky sack players and went out and snuck around and came up behind a Kowesi and was walking slow and bent over like he was. And the little boy would turn, he giggled to his chums a little bit and he'd do some more. And you have a show here at the Kalamazoo Valley Museum. Tell me a little bit about that. Someone at the museum contacted me and heard that I was a storyteller and wondered if I had any stories about the nighttime sky. And I did, and we made a production where I tell stories in the planetarium, and then the, the planetarium, through their technology, illustrate the stories in the sky or in the ceiling or in the planetarium. And so it, it seems they're still running it after 20 years, and we're getting a lot of positive feedback and reviews, so it must be okay. Yep. After a little while, a says, oh, look at those, those heart berries. Oh, Damon. The word for heart is ode. The word for strawberry is ode min, or heartberry. And we call them that because of their color and their shape, eh? So the little boy, he gathered up a bunch of those heartberries. They continued walking. They spent the whole day in the bush, Kwesi pointing things out to the boy. There's the beaver dam, and there's a beaver lodge, and over there some birch trees that are good to harvest. Well, evening came and they went back to the village. They got to the edge of the village and the young boy ran ahead looking for his friends. And he found his playmates. And he said, Shawa, he said, that old man is awesome. He knows all sorts of stuff about the bush. You also have a memoir, I which, which I wanted to talk about. Well, it's titled uh, Lost from the Ottawa, the story of the journey back. And it recounts my adoption away from the native community into the white world. That's the lost part. There was also some historic events that I was involved in. I had a U.S. Supreme Court case that uh, it was against Richard Nixon and we outlawed or we got Nixon to stop 
wiretapping domestic dissidents. I was a so-called domestic dissident, and the Nixon administration wiretapped me, and it was an illegal wiretap, a wiretap done without a warrant, and that ended up going to the Supreme Court, which we won. Well, this went on day after day, every day. Quasi wake up, and there's all them kids, and off they go into the bush. In the meantime, the parents to these children began speaking amongst themselves. And they were saying things like, well, isn't it wonderful that a Kowasi is spending all this time with the children? Oh, yeah, everyone agreed. Yeah, that's wonderful. Someone said, well, you know, he's teaching them things that we don't even know. Oh, they said, we're truly blessed to have a Kowasi spend his time with the children. And then someone spoke up and they said, well, maybe we should move his lodge from over there and we should put him right here in the center of the village. Oh, that's a good idea, everyone said. So they moved his lodge. Kwesi opened that door one morning. He told those children, he says, this will be my last day with you, for I'm going through the western door. He said, but when I'm gone, leave my wigwam just as it is. So he spent that whole day with those children, teaching them the medicines. Evening came and they went back to the village. And everyone went to their lodges. And then morning came. Now usually, a Kwesi was up, got up when the sun was about over here, about 7 or 8 o'clock. Today already the sun was straight overhead. It was noon, and a Kwesi hadn't gotten up yet. Remember the little boy who started this story? The one who walked up behind a Kwesi? Well, he stood up, and he said, I'm going to look in that lodge. Oh, all the other kids, they took a step back. That kind of, that made him kind of uncomfortable. But that little boy, he walked right up there, and he, took that flap and he looked in and there lay Kowesi. He had passed away in the night just like he said he was going to. But as always happens, spring followed. And those kids were out playing one day and that same little boy, remember him? He said to his playmates, he said, let's go over to a Kowesi's lodge. And now a Kowesi's lodge is all laying on the ground and it's returning to the earth. And that little boy looked down where Kowesi's bed was and he said, Look, a little oak tree. A Kwesi kept his promise. He came back as a little oak tree. And I hope you picked up, because it's more than just that story. We moved his lodge from over there, and we put education right in the center of the village. Huh? Those elders, they are the encyclopedias. They are the Googles of their time. So the whole story is about about the elder and the children. And we're taught that the reason elders and children get along so good is that both are equal distance from the Creator. Children have just come from the Creator. Elders are getting much closer to the Creator. And here's a perfect example right here. Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.